Every year, more people are playing games on their phones. And one category called social casinos has quickly become a multi-billion dollar industry. But new evidence shows game developers are targeting vulnerable users, all with the help of Facebook and its massive trove of personal data. For the record, PBS NewsHour produces some content as part of a business relationship with Facebook. From Reveal, at the Center for Investigative Reporting, Nate Halverson has this story. Susie Kelly is a grandmother from suburban Dallas. Five years ago, she and her husband were thinking about retirement. But all that changed one afternoon when she sat down to watch TV. There was a commercial for Big Fish Casino, and I thought it was a casino casino at first, and then I realized it was a game. Big Fish Casino, play for free, play for fun. The game she downloaded is part of a rapidly growing industry called Social Casinos that launched on Facebook about 10 years ago. These apps bundle together games like poker, roulette, and slot machines. Kelly's slot machine game was free to play, at first. But once her free chips ran out, she had to buy more to keep playing. I would say that my spending increased to hundreds of dollars and thousands of dollars within, within the first month. How much could you win playing Big Fish Casino? Real money? Zero. Nothing at all. Why? Because they don't pay real money. They only take money to give you virtual chips to continue to play on their app. Fully aware she could never cash out her chips, that first month, Kelly spent nearly $8,000. I just couldn't stop. You know, it's like, holy cow, what the hell have I done again? Nine months after downloading the free game, Kelly had spent more than $40,000. I have an addiction. I just, I realized I had to get out of it. I needed out. She decided to quit and emailed the game company. Kelly showed me hundreds of messages between her and Big Fish Casino. And you write to them and the subject line is, all caps, cancel account. Right. I wrote, I just can't do this anymore. I've maxed out my Amex twice. Did they delete your account? No, sir. Kelly asked Big Fish Casino to delete or permanently ban her from playing nearly a dozen times. The company never did. She continued spending, hiding it from her husband. In total, Kelly would lose more than $400,000. You know, I, I had to come clean with my husband. I took a breath, I remember this, and I said, it's like, I said, I'm sorry, Chuck. I said, I, th I think, you know, we might lose. <laughs> we might, I don't wanna lose everything, you know? I mean, it's absolutely predatory. And uh, I mean, it should be unacceptable. Keith White is the executive director of the National Council on Problem Gambling. He said real casinos would be required to cut her off or face big fines, but there are no regulations on social casino games. Those people who like Susie appear to have very severe gambling problems or gambling-like problems, they can't just walk away. White said their helpline is increasingly filled with people addicted to social casinos and they've lost serious money. He said social casino games appear to be five times more addictive than traditional casinos. In the US alone, you're talking well over 100 million people who uh, report playing somewhat regularly on social casino apps. And again, no one's tracking this because it's, it's not being regulated. Last year, social casino companies earned more than $5 billion, nearly as much as all the casinos on the Las Vegas Strip. But companies like Big Fish claim their games are just entertainment and have avoided any gambling regulations. It's a very highly lucrative, but somewhat secretive uh, industry that has exploded across the United States in the past decade. Big Fish declined our request for an interview, but sent a written statement saying the company is dedicated to delivering great entertainment experiences, and that we strive to ensure that our social games comply with all applicable standards, rules, and requirements. I spoke to former employees of these social casinos. None wanted to go on camera, but described a darker side, saying it was widely known some players were addicted and their warnings to management went ignored. One player spent so much on the game, she couldn't afford her prescription medicine. And they told me another's home was in foreclosure. Susie Kelly said the first time she tried to quit, Big Fish called her on the phone, not to cancel her account, but to assign her a personal VIP host, Byron Scott, who gave her free chips to keep her from leaving. Where would this relationship with Byron Scott go? What did it become? This was a daily thing. 
um, back and forth. It was like a friendship. And, you know, my mother passed away in 2016. They sent me flowers. And they also sent, of course, chips to keep me playing. Hi, guys. Uh, we tracked down footage from a 2013 uh, tech conference of Jose Brotens, who helped pioneer the VIP system for social casinos. He is speaking on stage to a room full of game developers. Brotens worked for Aristocrat, the same company that owns Big Fish Casino. He designed the VIP system to target the tiny fraction of players who will actually pay to play the games. You've got to think that about 3% of your, of your users are going to be generating 80 to 90% of the value for the company. We obtained leaked company documents that show how his VIP system tracks players by their Facebook IDs, closely monitors their gameplay, and then prods people to keep them spending. They refer to their VIPs as whales, a term taken from the casino industry to describe big spenders. Social casinos now use behavioral analysis software to quickly identify people who are likely to become big spenders. Behaviors like increasing your bet or playing frequently are signals to the companies, and they target these players with heavy marketing and label them proto-whales, as Broton's explained to a room full of game developers back in 2015. We're now capable of predicting proto-whales within their first game session, so we can assign a very high likelihood that a person's gonna be a proto-whale. I show Kelly documents outlining the creation of the VIP program. Yep, bingo. For me, that's like, Does let's find like the weakest person and destroy their life. Does it feel like they're targeting your addiction? Absolutely. There is another company profiting from these games. Facebook makes hundreds of millions of dollars selling virtual chips to players like Kelly. Julian Cordenot, a Facebook executive, spoke at a game conference in 2014 about social casinos. It's the number one category on Facebook. It's a category that you know, never stops growing. Every year we see new companies out of nowhere coming up with amazing games, amazing IP, launching on Facebook, launching on mobile, making significant money. Facebook's website shows how it tracks people online and can predict who is likely to spend big by analyzing user data. Facebook helps social casinos find those potential whales. It charges a premium to nudge players to spend more, to target people whose online behavior might be a sign of addiction. It's very good for gaming companies because they can decide to target on Facebook or on mobile, uh, you know, sp specific users or just the whales. Facebook declined to speak on camera, but sent a written statement saying that while they don't build ad products specific to social casinos, they understand that certain games or products can impact some people differently, and they are working to understand the long-term impact of certain kinds of content. Sam Lesson is a former top executive at Facebook. He now runs his own venture capital firm. But back in 2012, he wrote an email to his then boss and close friend, Mark Zuckerberg. Lesson wrote that he wasn't proud of their work with slot machine companies. I'm fine with it, he wrote, just not proud of it. Lesson won't discuss his time at Facebook, but agreed to speak generally about how companies are targeting people like Susie Kelly. She ended up spending over $400,000 playing a slot machine game. Yeah, I mean, it sounds disgusting, right? You know, we're gonna have to live in a world where both very, very good people and very, very bad people have better tools. Do we want hyper-targeted ads uh, from beer companies to alcoholics? Do we want hyper-targeted ads from casinos to gambling addicts? No, of course we don't want those things, right? Like, no thinking person is like, that's great. But then the question is, well, okay, like, let's be really clear, what, what rule do you wanna write? right? And how are you going to enforce that rule? Susie Kelly joined a lawsuit last year in the state of Washington, where Big Fish Casino is based, arguing that the game constitutes illegal gambling, and she is asking for her money back. She's now getting help for her gambling addiction and says she no longer spends money on Big Fish, but she is still dealing with near financial ruin from the game. If you could go back in time to that moment when you were about to download the app, what would you tell yourself? Don't do it. You don't know this until you play this game, but you've got a problem. If you have an addiction, you're screwed. And there is nothing stopping companies from continuing to target people's addictions. For PBS NewsHour, I'm Nate Halverson with Reveal in Plano, Texas.
If you have spent hundreds or thousands of dollars playing a social casino game on Facebook or a mobile device, Reveal wants to hear from you. To share your story, go to revealnews.org slash whale.